Hi, thank you so much for being on the podcast. So I guess I just want to start by asking you, give us a background on, on who you are and your story. Yeah, of course. Well, thanks for bringing me on. It's a very exciting project. I can see it's happening at the moment. Um, well, a bit about me in general. Um, well, my name is Gasub, or easy, quick name is Gus. A lot of people know me, call me Gus. Um, I'm a pharmacist for about, let's say, about five to six years at this point, but I've been deep in the industry for over 10 years since I was in high school. So um, I'm born and bred pharmacist at this point. Been working in a few areas around Sydney, and at the moment, I'm based in Blacktown, Sincotta in Blacktown at the moment. Nice. So you said that you are deeply entrenched in the pharmacy world. So can you mm. can you explain that a bit more? Yeah, of course, of course. So like, you know, ever since maybe even before the HSC eleven, um, which is like the year before we graduate secondary school, it's um, I've always been working in a pharmacy. All my family's been working in a pharmacy. I have my Biggest sister has been a retail manager for over 10 to 15 years at other, like at a competitive sort of pharmacy chain. I have relatives that are all in the pharmacy industry as well. So ever since I was very, very young, I was always exposed to healthcare or pharmacy in some capacity, where it'd be, you know, hospital pharmacy, it'd be retail, or community pharmacy, or it'd be anything healthcare related. So it's always been something that I've been exposed to. So, and, and everyone I know in my family has been very, very sort of, um, not well knowledge, but rather they'll be exposed to some that some capacity to what healthcare is or how it works, and especially on terms of the pharmacy side of things and how the business works in general. It's always been something that we've been well aware of, for sure. So is that is it something that you kind of were like when you were a kid? You're just like, okay, I want to I want to grow up and become a pharmacist. Like this is this is what I want to do when I mm, get older. Mm, like, what was your journey like in getting? Yeah, getting yeah, absolutely. Great question. So like for me, it was a bit more like. During year 10, 11, and 12, I think, we, like most students, we all go through that sort of existential crisis where we're like, you know, you're 16 years old, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know where you're going to be in about five years or the next day. So I think um, what was important for me is I definitely knew that I wanted to be in something in healthcare and, and at the same, same place, I wanted something that was going to spark like creativity and keep my brain going. And I definitely didn't want a desk job. I did, definitely didn't want something where I'm sitting down all the time and like on a computer. That's not definitely not, not what I wanted. So um, the only real way for me to figure out what I really needed or what I wanted to do or what I was passionate about was to actually jump in head first into say, for example, a pharmacy or in like a dentist or like a medical center and see what the world is like and see what suited me. And for me, I think pharmacy was the the best sort of um, combination of elements. So you got your clinical side of things, you got your sort of creative side of things in terms of you know running a business, you know establishing rapport, establishing clientele, and then the clinical side of things like doing you know medicine reviews, you know doing Webster packs, doing clinical interventions, calling up doctors, and being that liaison between patient and you know doctors and hospitals. So. That was a really, really cool factor that a lot of people don't know about. Um, and the third thing as well is, you know, having the ability to know everyone, all your, your patients on a first name basis, they come, you know, you have that human connection that you don't really see in many other healthcare sectors. For example, like, you know, you may see in a medical center, you may see in a dentist, but at the end of the day, there will always be, you know, a client booked in at a certain time. You know what I mean? There'll never be, you know, John Smith just come off the street He's got his scripts on file with you. He's just updating you about his, you know, his new granddaughter that was just born the other day and they're showing you photos and, you know, you, you have that connection. So it's not like a trans, just a transaction. It's more of a, a relationship with the community. So I don't know. I felt like for me, pharmacy is more like a safe space for the community. It's like the, the barbershop of the suburb where you can come and, you know, sit down and it's a safe space. And you can, you know, talk about your personal issues comfortably without knowing, without like thinking anyone's going to sort of leak it or, you know, or any um, sort of discrimination or judgment. So I think that's what's beautiful about the pharmacy world in particular. Yeah, definitely. And I think, to be honest, like when I think about my time, you know, working in pharmacy, I think mm. the, for me, what was most satisfying was those daily interactions. It was just that constant interaction with patients and people coming into the pharmacy and asking you questions. And it's such an interesting dynamic because you kind of, you know, it's like you said, it's one of the unique places within the healthcare industry where 
it isn't, for example, appointment based, you know, for pretty much every mm. other healthcare uh, like option out there, you have to make an appointment. There's very much quite kind of a sense of hierarchy in the sense that there's a lot yeah. of friction to kind of getting in and talking to a healthcare provider. Whereas I think mm. one of the strengths of being a pharmacist in the community is having that high touch kind of Correct. element there, which is, it's, it's really nice. But you were talking about creativity and mm how one of the reasons you went into pharmacy was you wanted something that was going to be creative creativity yeah. i think is not something is not the first thing that comes to mind when we think mm. of, of pharmacy or, or being yeah. a pharmacist so i'm curious yeah. how you kind of got to that point of what your experiences have been like since getting yeah into pharmacy. absolutely absolutely so or like you know for anyone that's outside of the pharmacy world or outside of the sort of community specifically community or retail pharmacy world um, there's, there's something that's so special about it that you can't find in other places, or I'm sure you can mold it in other sort of disciplines, but it's very, very commonplace in, in retail is you can have the ability to reach out to, for example, like what we have done in our pharmacy at St. Cotton and Blacktown. We did, for example, you know, the world's greatest shave. We did a fundraiser where most of our pharmacists decided to participate, fundraise money, and it was essentially all the money goes to cancer research. And then we have like the whole community that town city council we had the neighboring football team they were sponsoring the event we had a a bike club as well i think they were sponsoring the event as well they all came out we had like you know a uh, fate pretty much and we did the event we were shaved the heads and recorded it and and it was crazy it was incredible great turnout and at the same time like it really makes you think it's like wow you know just with the initiative of fundraising money as simple as just giving like having a donation box you could scale it up to the idea of having a full fate just in your pharmacy, which is like the center of the community anyway. So really it's your ability to perform or rather your ability to connect to the community is so heavily reliant on your creativity. If you're not creative or if you don't have that motivation to be creative or that initiative, then it's really going to lead your to your pharmacy, not just falling short, to read you connecting to the community. So if you're creative, you'll be able to engage more people and more members of your sort of neighboring or neighborhood rather, and hopefully re retain them at the same time, but also they'll find comfort in you guys participating with them. So it's like a give and take in that way. But that's just, that's how important creativity is for sure. The things like that, but on top of that as well, we did other things as well, like, you know, flu vaccinations, COVID vaccines, you know, big promotions of those. Uh, Webster packs is another thing for like the elderly, just to help sort of assist with their compliance with medicines. We did like a lot of campaigns that helped sort of really pick it up. No, definitely, definitely. And I think, um, you know, when you were touching on how it, it gives you the opportunity to be creative, I, mean, I would I would say that when I moved into content marketing, mm. it was very much informed by the creativity that I had to be able to demonstrate working in a pharmacy environment. And so it was just a natural transition to be able to just move that skill set over into a completely yeah. different industry. So it's really interesting now to see the kind of the number of pharmacists that are working in sectors completely outside of community and hospital mm -hmm. pharmacy, which are usually the mm -hmm. traditional places that you go. And that might have changed since my time because back in my time, that was very much like you either went into industry or hospital or community and yeah. that was kind of the way you went. Whereas right. you graduated a, a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. So things might have changed compared to yeah. um, yeah. you know, when I was back at uni. So is that something that pharmacy schools are now focusing on? Uh, look, to be honest, um, I think uh, what I can, I can't fault the pharmacy sort of faculty in terms of teaching things, especially in the fourth year, that are a little bit more outside of the regular box of pharmacy. So um, we're not necessarily locked into either like hospital, retail and industry like we were before. Um, they, there is a new variation of the actual pharmacy degree now that's come out recently. It's just including its pharmacy and, and business management. Um, so it's like a whole new sort of um, re sort of reorganized the pharmacy degree. It's a, it's actually a separate degree to the normal pharmacy degree. So when you're applying now through UAC, you can either choose for just regular bachelor of pharmacy or you can do a bachelor of pharmacy and business management as well. So that's a, a really, really good step in the right direction, I think, in terms of um, getting students exposed to like real life sort of tangible skills that aren't limited to like a textbook. So, you know, you can learn your pharmacology, you can learn your pharmacokinetics, dynamics, that's great. Um, and that's really, really helpful for those industry heavy or those um, hospital heavy uh, students that are really passionate about that kind of sort of area of study. But like you mentioned about creativity and especially for the pharmacists that are 
you know, really geared towards entrepreneurship or really geared towards, you know, content creation and things like that, especially in this climate, post COVID and everything. I think this new variation of degree really sort of blends that sort of um, that little pocket in the community um, that hasn't really been sort of satisfied just yet. So I think um, it's it's a really interesting sort of um, first step. And I think for me, it made a big difference, definitely, because um, for me, it allowed me to sort of learn a lot of skills about not just content creation, but understanding what marketing is, understanding what a business is, as opposed to just saying a place where you you know buy items. It's something a little bit more than that. Um, and like how to sort of set up a, a customer base or how to establish rapport, how to establish sort of brand recognition, things like that. So I think those little elements are really, really integral and they can carry on to your retail pharmacy sort of career. Or for me, I took it the, uh, both ways. I took it both down the retail pharmacy way and I also took it down like the entrepreneurship way with the tutoring and the teaching and the, and the coaching sort of business at the same time. So it worked out well for me because it helped me both sides of the spectrum. Tell us a bit more about your tutoring. So I, mm. you, you've basically taken all of your learnings and you've applied them mm. in, in a real entrepreneurship yeah. sense. And that's interesting because I feel like nowadays being able to purchase a pharmacy might be out of reach for a lot of, mm. a lot of people, may not even be viable for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Whereas you've taken that and you've applied it in a completely unexpected way. So talk us through a bit more about how that, that started for you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you're right. Absolutely, the um, pharmacy industry is extremely competitive, especially in terms of purchasing or buying into a pharmacy. So nowadays, you know, the market is extremely inflated naturally, especially um, with the good and bad changes in legislation that's going on in the last year or two um, to pharmacy. So things like sixty day dispensing and you know the beginning of uh, you know more pharmacist based services. So like the UTI trial. Um, the uh, contraceptive pill trial, and even now the, the travel vaccines, it's a positive outlook as well. But because of that, the prices of all the pharmacies, the values have gone through the roof. Um, so a lot of pharmacists, including myself, have gone out, not just for financial at the same time benefit, but at the same time, it's really a passion project to branch out into an area where we're like confident in and we have passion about. So for me, for example, I went down the education route. My, my From the get-go, I've always wanted to teach. Um, it was healthcare related or if it was any subject related, anything I was passionate about, I'm happy to talk about. So um, for me, I started with my basics, my roots, were, which was English. It was my specialty. So um, I was really, really passionate about, you know, English, texts, films, analysis. So I thought, you know, back in the, back when I was in HC, I had no support at all. So I thought maybe I could make some sort of service now, you know, that's maybe completely contactless online. You know, it's really easy to consume, really easy to access, you know, just so those kids can get that support and they don't need to drive and get their parents to drive them to an actual place to study. They can just connect online, just like how we're doing today um, and do the power of the internet, I guess. And, um, but it's been really, really a beautiful journey just to see, you know, how, how to sort of um, just set that up and organize it and advertise it it's great it's it's a really um satisfying and it's been a it's been an interesting journey that's for sure but it, it's definitely been worth it absolutely and i can definitely see that my pharmacy skills are transitioning over to that and how how long have you been doing that for now so it's been i've been used to you know, doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring here and there for the, over the last few years but for the last year and a half i've been doing it properly as an actual brand um like a proper launch of a business um where it's through an instagram page through a booking portal and everything so um it's a little bit more sort of formalized now so for about a year and a half so talk us talk us through what that was like like from mm. the moment that you said i want to do a shooter in company right mm. up to saying i have this instagram and i'm now advertising my business and i'm like i'm i'm building this i'm building this. yeah yeah absolutely absolutely that. for sure so it originally started when I was used to do tutoring just one-on-one -on -one here and there for like friends and family. So that used to be something I used to do just as a, like a, like a favor. It wasn't really a, like a job or anything. Um, so, you know, parents would call me and they're like, you know, my son needs help or my daughter needs help in X, Y, and Z. And then I would just, you know, jump over and help them out with homework, for example, or an assignment. And then, you know what, like, you know, when you do it for the first time, you realize if it's something's a passion because it clicks straight away. And then like, you really feel that motivation to continue. I'm like, as soon as I did it, I'm like, wow, this is great. Like I really find myself comfortable here and I see there's something there. There's a, there's a, there's a something in the market that's missing 
So I thought maybe there's something I could probably bring to the table. It's a little bit different. So that's when it started really. And then after that, you know, I started the Instagram page, you know, just slowly putting out advertisements and you know, providing what kind of services we do. And, and then after that, it branched out to like brochures and pamphlets and, you know, dropping them off in mailboxes and, and you're dropping them off at the local cafe and local gyms and things like that as well. So then, you know, on the reception desk, you know, you walk by and you see, you know, a success specialist pamphlet just on the table there um, and a QR code to take you, take you to our Instagram page. And that's how it grew. It grew from there. And these are high school students, right? You're tutoring yeah, mostly correct, high school correct. students? Yeah. So for now, what's happening is it's going to strictly just HSC. So you're, you're looking at your like yeah. 16, 17 year olds. And then um, soon what's happening is I have the whole pharmacy related training is coming in soon. That's a later thing that's happening, hopefully end of this year. That one is more targeted for like your pharmacy intern. So your pharmacy graduate. They just started the internship and it, this is just like a helping hand for them. But that's another project that's down the line. <laughs> it's still in the works. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, I can definitely see a huge opportunity there for that. Um, mm. I don't know if things have evolved again. My time, I feel so old and I'm giving away my age by like saying this. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely remember the internship, you know, being quite a struggle back in the day yeah. because there, there yeah. wasn't really a lot of support. So I don't know if that's that's changed now so what was, was mm. where did so, this idea come from so this idea well, me, of a pharmacy yeah, yeah absolutely so back in when you were doing the internship did you have a pharmacy intern program at all we did yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. Like so ITP program. yeah itp correct correct so the itp did you personally find it helpful not really <laughs> not really not at the time it did the basics like there were you know there were basic things that you kind of that it that it provided but yeah there were so yeah. many other challenges that you had to get through that it would have i know that at the time it probably would have been helpful to have people who were maybe a couple of years above me yeah yep yeah. help me Correct. get through that time yeah. um exactly right. you probably had a very similar experience exactly right one to one honestly i think um we we both share the exact same experience to be completely honest and and we're not alone. I think majority of pharmacy interns, mm. especially post COVID now at all times where, you know, because university was completely contactless for a lot of kids after me. Um, so they never had any physical connection outside of like lab prax. So I think something like a mentorship program or something like a, you know, like a big brother program pretty much for a pharmacy internship where you have someone you do look up to or a team of people, or like at least a resource where you can reach out to anytime for, you know, filling in gaps in knowledge, you know, exam preparation, um, real life scenarios, conflict resolution, you know, how to sort of organize a uh, health program or launch a health strategy at the pharmacy level. What are the options in pharmacy? Like as an intern, I had, I was so, um, how do I say, conflicted. I didn't know where I wanted to go. I didn't know if I wanted to stick to community pharmacy. I didn't know what is hospital pharmacy? What is industry? You know, what does that in, even involve? So I think if I had like a resource, resource where I could, you know, jump into a video call, jump into a, like a YouTube video that breaks down each individual sort of pathway in the career or have insights from someone that's actually in that career path, they'll be invaluable, invaluable. But, so that's kind of things that we didn't have, unfortunately, but um, hopefully my plan is to fill in that gap, hopefully by the end of this year, beginning of next year, hopefully. Yeah, that, I mean, that's that's awesome. Like even just having mm. the mentorship option yeah. is, is an amazing option to yeah. help yeah. these graduating farmers see the like multitude of options that they have available to them that they might not even be aware that they have available to them. Yeah, correct. So correct. How, how did you find the experience of, of marketing your business? Yeah. So when, you, um... when you started, like what... In- because it's not something that necessarily comes naturally to no. to someone who's just came come out of uni. Yeah, correct, correct. So it, I find that uh, I found it really, um, really enjoying, a really entertaining, and really satisfying just going on that journey just to find what clicks. Um, because when it comes to marketing, yeah. I'm sure you know it's about like you know you got to capture that target market, and you got to like it's all trial and error initially when you're on your own. Um, figuring out what works, what doesn't yeah. work. Are you pushing the wrong, you know, social media completely? Are you using the wrong hashtags? Are you boosting into the wrong area? So I think it's um really really important that you sort of trial and error first. And if, to anyone that's new to the to marketing in general, new to starting a business, I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress it too hard. Like I wouldn't like lose sleep over it. 
It's something where it's good to make mistakes. It's good to experiment, just try different formats. I think just stick to one social media at a time if you're very small. So don't or like straight away open a LinkedIn, yeah. Instagram, yeah. Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube. It's way too much to handle for one person. Um, I think um, just stick to find what you're like, what you're who, what you're selling to, or who you're selling to. If I'm selling like clothing or like for example knitwear, I'll be selling you know for, like to, directly to a younger or a middle age you know market on Instagram. I wouldn't be going on LinkedIn. You know what I mean? So, uh, or if I'm selling a tutoring sort of uh, business, I'd be going. For you know, if it's, if it's a pharmacy tutoring, it'd go through LinkedIn. If it's a high school tutoring, it'd be through Instagram. So it depends on like um, you know who your market is. But experiment, trial and error—that's the most important thing. Take advantage of all the free tools that are available. Um, there's so many free tools available that are really really good nowadays. Like Canva is fantastic. ChatGPT is awesome as well in terms of assisting, giving you ideas and brainstorming sort of content ideas as well especially if you're you know working a full-time job and you're trying to content create at the same time it's um it, it's quite a handful um so i think um using those resources now and taking advantage of it and brainstorming using chat gpt to brainstorm not strictly just to generate content but to give you ideas and where to go is really really powerful um i used canva and I still use Canva occasionally to make a lot of like advertising content and it's it's just so powerful. Um, and the customization options are great and you can make it custom to your brand. But yeah, definitely trial and error is number one. And number two is just take advantage of everything free and don't go out of your way and necessarily pay for like, boosting. It's way too early in the business. I think once the business starts to pick up a little bit more and then you know you can narrow down your target market, that's when you can maybe consider boosting into a certain area. But when you're just starting out, don't work. Not worth it. No. Because that's the hardest part, isn't it? It's finding that product market fit right at the beginning, mm. zero to one, and finding yeah. who your target market is and how to attract them. So, what was that like for you? What was what was that zero yeah. to like zero point one section of your hard. journey like? Yeah, it was very hard. It was very, very, very hard. Like uh, for me, it it took a, a while to get to get that zero to one. I was. I still do it occasionally, but essentially in the big, very, very beginning, my main strategy was Facebook parent groups and it was Facebook um, like uh, teacher groups and HSC student groups. And a lot of times um, it's the problem with or the only issue I have with it when I first started was you'd reach out to people and then they won't follow up or they'll reach out to you and they won't follow up either. So you're stuck in the middle where there's like a no, there's no movement in the conversation at all. And you're sort of stuck there and whether or not you've lost a lead or not, who knows? So I think um, that you first know. really difficult, really, really difficult. But then what's good is that once you've locked in that first one um, and I, and some, there are some really good strategies to do that for tutoring. And I use like a free, free first lesson for that um, because it's no risk to them. So as a, as a, as a customer, they will literally have zero risk. They're not putting any money down. There's no deposits, no plan, nothing like this. You put a free trial, if you're happy with it, then we can consider doing a more of a long-term thing. And if they're not happy with it, then that's it. Then we just part ways. So that was a really, really helpful strategy that I did. And that helps sort of keep, get the ball rolling for sure. Yeah. The thing I really love is um, I think a lot of people go into business thinking they have to create something completely new. They have to reinvent the wheel. They have to... Yeah come up with a business model that no one's ever done before in order to be successful. But you're proving that, you know, education and tutoring, that's, it's not a new concept. You know, it's, it's, it, there, there are plenty out there and yet you can still find that little niche yep. within the industry that seems oversaturated and still make it work. So what are your, what are your thoughts on that? And how, how would you speak to that? Yeah, I a hundred percent agree with you for sure. So there's um, everything that is invented has already been invented. So um, we, we can't really sort of make something new from it. But what we can do, like you said, we've got to find that chink in the armor. We have to find that crack in the wall um, and fill in the crack. So essentially, if, for example, in my context, in terms of education, it's, you know, one-on-one -on -one personalized custom study plans and coaching and mentorship, which is something you won't find in a normal tutoring center. And narrowing it down to a single or two subjects at the moment is what separates our or my business from other generic sort of tutoring places that are, we are tailored made to a certain niche, a certain clientele. 
Whereas when another massive tutoring company, nothing wrong with that, to have a massive tutoring company, it's just that your mindset is completely different. So your mindset, say for example, you're a massive tutoring actual physical center, you're gonna have cookie cutter classes that treat a group like setting. So you're gonna have 20 students, same content for everyone, you just take it or leave it. And that's fine, and, and the clients expect that. But the benefit of my business is that you're coming in with a mindset that you're going to get a custom class that's designed for your advantages and your weaknesses. And we're going to work on those weaknesses to sort of scrub them up and get rid of them and sort of strengthen you and give you the skill set to not just perform in the exam, but to perform in outside of the exam in real life. So stress management, sort of goal setting, um, sort of um, giving yourself the mindset of success in general. So that's... Um, my sort of uh, niche that I'm trying to fill at the moment that allows you to separate yourself very easily, very, very easily. Interesting. It reminds me of something. I don't know if you follow Alex Formosi. I think everyone follows. Alex yeah, Formosi. definitely. I think everyone does at this but, point. Um, <laughs> I think if you're an entrepreneur or you're in business of any kind, you know yeah, who he is. Yeah, yeah, right. um, he said something about basically what he was saying. Someone asked him, you know, I'm a small company. Like, what do, what can I possibly offer? to another company that a larger company can't offer like what what do i have like what can i do that the big guys can't do and he's like mm. the fact that you are small means that you can offer them bespoke services that the larger companies can't do right Correct. and that in itself is a strength so don't look at that as being a negative thing and mm. i think it's very easy sometimes to look at our what we think are disadvantages and be able to kind of flip them and realize that actually we can probably use this to our advantage in some way. Yeah. So the fact yeah. that you've been able to find that is a testament to that. Yeah, correct. That's spot on. So yeah, you're exactly right. So that's the beauty of being a small business in the sense where you can, yeah, sort of identify yourself and separate yourself from the big players by making yourself your making your own game. So not playing on their field, so to speak. So instead of playing on the same sort of same uh, basketball court, you're playing in your own field, you're doing your own thing you've separated yourself and you're in your own niche. So by doing that, and that's regardless of any field. So if it's healthcare, education, sports, nutrition, you name it, as long as you're separating yourself and keeping reinventing the wheel as opposed to, well, not necessarily reinventing the wheel, but rather sort of um, changing out the wheels <laughs> every now and again, just to refresh in yourself and give yourself a new outlook, a new mindset. Um, that's probably the most important thing. Keep yourself changing and evolving. So not to stay stagnant. I mean, especially if you get stagnant and complacent, it's um, it's a disaster. It really is. It really mm. is. And that's Definitely. when, you know what, that's when you stop innovating and that's when you stop growing. So Correct. absolutely. Correct. I mean, it's been amazing to get all these views from you and to get mm. an understanding of what it's like as a pharmacist who started yeah. a business and is growing his business. Um, yes. Do you have, before we, before we, do you have any advice for the aspiring pharmacy entrepreneur yeah of course absolutely who's, who's thinking about it but they're not quite sure how to start oh, yeah. exactly right it says for anyone that's sort of saying there or you know have an idea you know whether it's um any sort of business or any sort of entrepreneur sort of like um possibility or or, or a potential entrepreneur business like mindset go for it honestly in this day and age there is no excuse honestly there is no excuse there is so many um, amazing sort of resources and amazing tools at your disposal that 20 years ago, 30 years ago, no one had. So I think if you think that you don't like being stuck to a nine to five, if you feel like you want to, you know, have an, uh, access to another potential opportunity that could be as big as it can be, it just depends on how much effort you want to put into it. Um, but take it, do it, start straight away, write up a plan. I always recommend anyone that has an idea to put it to paper, don't leave it in your brain, put it on a paper, write it on a Google doc, write an article about it, put it out somewhere so you can read it out. And like, if it makes sense and if someone else reads it and they like it, that means it has, a, has viability on the market. So I think all you got to do is get your game plan there, write down your ideal customer. Who is your ideal customer? Who is your ideal client? Are they... A teenager are they an adult male female mother parent child you know are they a student are they a car enthusiast are they an athlete are they you know who's your who is your perfect you know client who's your perfect customer and then mold your business from there what kind of services would benefit that customer what kind of marketing would attract that kind of customer what kind of um 
sort of wording or what kind of phrasing should I be using in my sort of resources, in my content that will sort of connect with that kind of clientele. So that's the, the brain, that brain should be thinking in that sort of way. But first things first, just get started, do it. It's um, ra rather you do it than regret it and say, oh, I wish I did this or I wish I did that. Just get it done. That's it. Solid advice. Just get started. Literally yeah. like build the airplane on the way down after you've jumped off. Yeah, correct. correct <laughs> I think that's correct. pretty solid a hundred percent and so many people they get so sort of um how do i say they get so caught up in oh you know this is going to be you know i'm gonna i'm gonna lose money or or it's gonna fail or something like that it's like dude it's okay like it's you don't have to like you're not going to be a google straight away you're not going to be amazon you're not going to be apple by day one yeah it's like you start day one yeah. start small yeah. Start off your advertising to your neighbors, advertise to your family. It costs zero dollars. You don't need to pay for that. Just start from there. Just walk around the neighborhood, give out pamphlets, take it from there. Just do the work, put in the hours, and that's it. And then you will, yeah. you will pay. You get what you what you put in. Really, you will get your dividends from what you put into the actual work. So, to take your time. It's all a patience game. So, if you're someone that likes to take your time, it will benefit you. If you're someone that sort of uh, is not patient. Then it's going to be a struggle. So patience is so important. It's going to be take your time, one step at a time. You might not get all the clients, but yeah, it will come in soon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Patience is is the name of the game. It's all yeah, about definitely. consistency and looking at the long term. Absolutely. I agree. So where can people find you if they want to look? You up? Yeah, of course. So you can find me on there's two places. There's my personal LinkedIn, which is my name, Gasub El Assad, and then I have my actual Instagram page was the uh, at uh, specialist for success. Um, so that's the actual business right. sort of Instagram handle. But otherwise, yeah, they're the main two places to reach me. Perfect. Well, everyone uh -huh. who's listening, you know where to find him if you want yeah, advice. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being no. today. It's been an Any absolute time. pleasure. No, likewise. Thank you so much for having me on. I we'll appreciate it. No problem at all. We'll chat to you soon.